I'm gonna get straight into it. Like, why is it important for somebody to start a business? For me, I think it's important to start a business because you're able to leave a legacy, right? You can't pass down material things, mm -hmm. but you can pass down your, your, your cigar shop. You can pass down your barber shop, your beauty supply store. You can pass that down through your, your lineage and it can live for a longer period of time when you think about all these old school businesses like Wells Fargo and Coca-Cola or Hilton Hotels. Those have all been passed down. So mm -hmm. people understand legacy. It's, it's like a movie where you say, have you, what would you do while you're here? I was here. Or if you think about reading somebody's obituary, you know, what is it going to say about you? Mm. What did you leave behind? So I feel it's very important. Even if it's just a small business, you could sell candy. But if, they, if your name is on it or if your business is, is left in your name, it, it's going to be here forever. Was that always you or was there a turning point where you was like, okay, now I need to establish my own business? So for me personally, entrepreneurship has always been in my, in my cards. From 11, paper route, you know, to lemonade stands, to doing all kind of odd jobs, handyman. I knew I had it early on, but I had to put it together. Right? I had to go through the process of learning how to start and run a business. But um, <clears throat> also my journey through education taught me some things. So for me, the, the, the business aspect was in my blood. And it's in a lot of people's blood, right? Mm -hmm. We're always taught to, to hustle and to have a gig or a side gig or a plan B, so to speak. Yeah. But you need to really, really focus on how it's supposed to be run. Mm -hmm. So what, what was like one of the toughest moments you went through, like, I guess, establishing those early businesses? Because you get a lot of people that's just afraid. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, one of my first companies was a credit restoration business. And at that time... People wasn't really running through their credit as bad as it seems like they are now. The, everybody, but it's a lot of credit restoration businesses. They was now. not around in ninety. It wasn't around in eighty nine when I started my. I started my first business. Well, my first credit restoration business because you can't call it credit repair because there's only three bureaus and they're the ones that technically repair. So we called it credit restoration, mm, and this was nine. Yeah, that. this was nineteen eighty nine. And I was helping people fixing their credit. I fixed a couple of my ball player friends' credit. They went overseas. They left their credit behind. I was learning the system. And then there was this guy, I forget his name, but he was selling his credit restoration book for $400. Mm. And that's when the light dinged. So I was like, you know what? I could do this for less than $400. You know, because a lot of times people want to do it themselves through letter writing processes, do, through um, disputing stuff online. But there's tricks to how you fix your credit, how you repair your credit, how you bump your score up. And so I was just telling people the tricks. If they couldn't pay me, I'd be like, look, all right, here, you're going to need 60 bucks. Here's what you need to do. Fast forward to today, everybody, and you know what it is, it's not the actual credit restoration it's the business model that they're using. Mm -hmm. And so this business model of, of um, direct sales network marketing is being used in credit restoration. So they're like, all right, come on in. If you can bring three friends to fix their credit, then your credit's going to be free. Mm -hmm. whoop, whoop, whoop. And so that's how they're getting paid down the line. Nothing wrong with that business model. I just felt like if you're going to do that model, you might as well start your own business and use that model if it works so well. That's true. And going back to this, like uh, going back to the, the question of starting a business and is it really important? Where do you think somebody should start? Like, yeah. so, where should I start? Step yeah. one. Step one is going to be to do the research on the actual industry and the business you're trying to start. So if you're going into something like a um, restaurant, if you're going into some type of service or some type of product or merchandising business, you need to kind of do the ins and out research to understand, you know, what your price points are, what your market is, how are you going to... Um, you know, get the cash to start it up, the startup cost, right? Because a lot of times people look past it and they just start doing it, right? Mm -hmm. And then they try to operate it after the fact. If you don't have some type of roadmap in play, then you're going to make mistakes that you shouldn't have to make, right? So the first step is to do the research. In that process is to, to like come up with a plan. I don't recommend people start out right writing a full-on business plan because mm -hmm. you don't have no book of business you don't have no historical data that's going to help you really project the way you need to project but once you get some data then you can tweak that little bit of outline that you started so research is the first step for me because really you're going to find out if you can actually do it yeah you know i remember telling people i told so many people like do a one-sheeter that's it. Get your idea out on one sheet. One sheet. Yep. If you can do that, then take off from there. Because too many times, 
I guess they research things on Google or whatnot, and they read full business plans, mm -hmm. and they try and do a full business plan. And I'm like, I went to college and got my degree in marketing. It's not easy doing a full business plan, even for some of us that run businesses. Mm -hmm. So somebody that don't know, you're going you're gonna to get discouraged very fast. And that's what I encourage people to do is find out what you're willing to tolerate and do, right? You, you, know, you might find out that that business idea that you have is too big in size and scope. Right. Mm -hmm. And so now you need to know, OK, my team is not big enough to pull this off. Well, that's a good first step. You start recruiting your team to get it bigger so you can actually take on the size and scope of this business that you're thinking about trying to run. Mm -hmm. What do you think was is the toughest part in creating a business? So probably the toughest part is understanding the market. Right. Because, you know, you <clears throat> you need to know your, your one mile square radius your five mile square radius and your 20 mile square radius, that's just in that area. Then you need to understand your uh, social media reach, your internet reach, right? Because there's competition that is strictly online mm -hmm. that you got to factor in and calculate for. So what we call that is the Amazon effect. You know, you have to factor in the Amazon effect because everybody might, they might support you, but they're going to look at Amazon first. You know, mm. hey, can I get this, you know, tripod or can I get this hat on Amazon before I come into your small business and buy it from you? Yeah, that's very true. But we see that model all the time. We see somebody be like, well, I'm trying to figure out a way to undercut you. And it's tough, you know, because you're going to undercut yourself out of profits and now you're just working for free. What made you choose to help? What made you choose to help people create businesses? So being an educator... Well, once I, once I got into education and started teaching, I realized that I was a natural coach, all right? And I had even coached during college. After playing ball, um, I started coaching a little bit in the summer leagues and different little, um, you know, open runs. And I realized, okay, I have an effective communication method, right? So how am I using that? Um, and so when I got on as a teacher some 18 plus years ago, I realized that, you know, my gift is to help. My gift is to teach. My gift is to give back. And, you know, yeah, the game is to be sold, not told. But at the same <laughs> time, I'm going to give a little bit away. I'm going to sell a little bit away. Mm -hmm. And doing that, you know, I've created my niche. And that's why I love what I do. There's passion behind it. Well, one of the biggest things that I see people run into is they don't want to create a business because of the fear of taxes. Taxes I don't know failure. how to fill it out the taxes and is writing off things a real thing. Can you talk a little bit more about how easy the process is to actually do your taxes? So it's not easy in terms of that if you're doing it yourself. I don't recommend anybody out there with their own business to be doing their own taxes. You have to use a bookkeeper, uh, an enrolled agent, or a CPA. Um, it's just mandatory, right? Even if you know taxes, Still, you need somebody else's signature on that final submitted document, so in case of an audit. Um, the other side of it is, is, is most small businesses, pretty much all small businesses out there, will commingle funds between personal and business. I've done it. I'm, light, I'm, I'm weaning myself off of, off of it, but you have to keep separate accounts for each uh, transaction that you do, understanding what's a business transaction and understanding what's personal transaction. You might be able to... Uh, move some receipts from personal to business if it's related to the business. And like for what I do with workshops and education, a lot of my personal transactions are actually related to my business transactions. What, when I go buy coffee, yeah, I might drink a cup, but I'm also taking that to my workshop to provide for my students that want coffee. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, those things are, are, are over time, you figure it out. But what you want to do early on is really discipline yourself to keep your business transactions separate so you can create the historical data in your financials, your financial statements that will then garner you investors, mm -hmm. loans, business credit, and also show on paper that you're doing well mm. or bad. It don't matter. Whatever one, but you need to know for real. Okay, I I made eighty thousand this year and I spent one hundred and twenty. Mm -hmm. All right, I lost forty. All right, what does that mean? Is, is tax write-offs a real thing? Now, we know it is, but I definitely want to let people know mm -hmm. from your so, mouth how real a tax write-off is. Tax write-offs are very real. The, the key is having someone smart enough to tell you what is a write-off and what ain't a write-off. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I learned over this past year is you're only able to write off $25 for a business meal or business expense. And you need to write on the receipt who you sat with. So if me and Cyrus go out, have a bite to eat, and the bill's fifty dollars. 
I can only write off 25 of that dollars as business that's development. per meal? Yeah, per receipt. Okay. You know, so you have to, and then you have to explain who, who you was with and maybe what y'all discussed or something, something, some little note on the receipt. They explain it. So in case of an audit, you got it. And it's recommended for those out there that are struggling with this. Take a picture with your phone of that receipt. Automatically, you have a good current digital record. And you can even upload that into your, your, your accounting software or some type of receipt tracker through Excel. It'll track your expenses for you. So now you don't have to worry about keeping a box of receipts that you can't find if you ever get audited or for your tax person. Do you know an app for that or do you use an app? I'm using an app called Neat, N-E-A-T, uh, to download receipts. But you can use QuickBooks. You can, uh, if you go to the App Store, Google Play, or even Apple, you're going to find all kind of receipt tracking programs that will, you take the picture, it'll, it'll categorize it, date, time, it'll create the file, and all you do is once a month send that file to your, your tax person. Another one, let's just put myself in a lot of people's scenario. I'm comfortable at my job, mm -hmm. but I want to start my own business. Right. I'm afraid. Do you have any advice for me? Yeah, so uh, do a self-assessment. All right, go online and do an entrepreneur self-assessment. There's a bunch of them. I recommend going to the second page after the first page and see which one. Take you about 10, 15 minutes. You need to know who you are, mm. right? You can't, you can't perpetrate a fraud when it gets time to working for yourself. Because either you're going to get your butt up at 4 a.m. and put in the work, or you're going to lay around to 8 and the day didn't start it, and, and, and you, 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 know, you don't know who you are. So you really need to know yourself before you, you get into yourself. a business. you got, you got to literally take as many self-assessments as possible. And you got to ask people that know you, who are you? <laughs> like check on your girl, your guy, check on your best friends, people, your mom, your dad. Hey, well, how do you perceive me? What, what kind of person do you think I am? Because if you don't, if you don't understand that you, you're gonna work harder for yourself than someone else, you're probably not gonna be a good entrepreneur. Then you might just look at management and just say, okay, I can, be, I can manage somebody's business, but I can't run it myself. Mm -hmm. I've actually talked to people that say, you know what, it's like that self-assessment you just said. I don't want to own my own business. I don't. I don't want to take that leap because I don't want to be in charge of everything, the taxes. It's a lot of fear, but I do want to. I do want to pinpoint that they should not move in fear, because that's one of the biggest things. Is people are afraid to start their own business. So the paperwork, as we can discuss, is not a difficult process. Not at all. So can you talk a little bit about the process of creating your business paperwork-wise? Yeah, so one of my quotes that I've been using for years, and if you quote, quote it, give me credit, paperwork makes the paperwork. So people have to understand, you're not in business unless you're in business on paper. You, you can't be telling me you, you did this and did that, but then I'll go to research you under Secretary of State and I can't find the name of your company. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you're a ghost and you're going under a blind trust. I can at least find something on you if you have a business on paper. And it's also important to understand that fear is an acronym for false evidence appearing real. A lot of people are scared of things they don't know, so that's where the research comes in. Mm -hmm. You know, we talked a lot of times about reading books and researching what, what uh, it takes to do certain things. So for, for those that are out there scared to get in business on paper, it's a very easy process. It's a part of my consulting dollars that I, I, I uh, make, but I charge people about 500 bucks to start a corporation. No, it's not legal zoom and no, it's not we the people. I'm 500. So mm -hmm. don't come and negotiate with me on what it costs. But we charge 500. We go from beginning to end, A to Z. We do all of the uh, uh, board and the fictitious business name statement, the EIN. We take care of everything for you. So it's easy. But for those that want to do it themselves, all I recommend is just go online, hit the SBA.gov, SBA, Small Business Administration.gov. It takes you through everything. It takes you right through it. And, and so, therefore, people that are fearful, they haven't done enough research. They haven't mm -hmm. even looked into it. Or if they looked into it and they found it was difficult, they didn't understand. Another Dorsey quote, do what you do best, outsource the rest. You ain't got to act like you know everything. Mm -hmm. Send some of that stuff to people that know how to do it. Pay the fee and move on. Yeah, I think, I think so many people want to keep every single dollar Control. that they will slow down their process. Mm -hmm. I've seen so many people I talk to that have been starting their business for three years. And that's you a know, three day years. that's and a I'm three like, day process. Yeah, not only that, I'm like sometimes 
Just pay people. That's it. Designs, just pay them. Like I'm not, I'm not graphically gonna make my logo. I'm gonna pay the person, make my logo, shoot that back to me. Because if they, if they ever did develop the website or did any design, they will realize how long it takes. Yes. So although this person is charging five hundred, like you just said, for yeah. your business, or seven hundred, or whatnot, for a website. It will take you, if you don't have no experience, if you get on one of these website builder um, websites, mm -hmm. it'll take you like three weeks it's versus it. this person that's, I mean, three weeks consistent time. Uh, putting in eight hours a day trying to figure it all out. Uh, again, Cyrus, that is one of the areas that, that knowing yourself, you're going to identify with because some people will cheapen themselves out of something, right? Mm -hmm. you, you add up your time and see what your, your time, time is worth. And I'm not saying go overboard, but I know how much I make an hour. So if I have to go through and put in five hours, that was worth me going and paying somebody because they're not charging me what I make an hour to do it. And I think people who don't fully understand what a business or presenting yourself, period, how important it is to present yourself properly. They want to cut, people cut corners on business cards, yep. flyers, websites. And I always say this, like when you're gone or when we pass away, you don't get a chance to explain <laughs> what the heck it was. why this looks so poorly, whether it is your album cover, whether it is your business card, whether it is your website, whatever it may be, mm -hmm. doing an audio book with bad quality sound, regardless of whatever it may be, I don't, you don't get the chance to explain, oh, my boy didn't have his microphone that day, so I decided to go. So I always say, you don't got to cut no corners. You be true to the business, and the business will be true to you. The first impressions are everlasting. So, you know, when I when, when Dorsey Academy and this hat was made, my logo, I said, you know what, this this could stand. When I put on my uniform, I'm proud to wear it, mm -hmm. right? When you put on your uniform, you're proud to wear it because you know it's quality, it was done right, it's not no BS. Mm -hmm. So it's important. I definitely want to get honest with the, with the viewers, too, about what are the chances of success? Very, very minimal, right? If you think about the competition that's out there, um, you got a, you got a lot to prove. It's, it's, it's proving yourself every day, right? But I, I always use this analogy. If you walk into the grocery store and you go down the bread aisle, what do you see? Bread. bread. So do you think the wheat bread is worried about the white bread, which is worried about the hot dog buns? No. The no. sourdough bread, the rye bread, it's competition all in the bread aisle. You have, to make, you have to put out the best product, the freshest product every day and allow people to make their choices on what they're going to spend their money on. And so if you're starting a business and you half-assing it or you're not stepping up to the plate every day with a good product, they can go anywhere. Yeah, go they can go anywhere. People, that's what's beautiful about America. We got choices here. We ain't, you know, this ain't North Korea. This ain't Syria. This ain't places where you can't, you know, do what you want to do. You can do what you want to do here. So and, that, that's real. And it goes to the next question with the success. How important is it to treat people properly within the business because how it affects word of mouth? That is probably the most important thing, right? Customer service. One of those things that I always fall back on is customer service, but also setting your policies, right? Because you have to have policies that, that are clear, unambiguous, that make sure that, it's, that, that people know what the policies are, right? So if you have a policy like I got one, uh, no refund policy, you can exchange, you can get an equal value for something. So let's say you, you sign up for a workshop, you want to take five classes, that's about $600, you know, could be a little bit more, a little bit less. But then you decide you don't want to take the classes because you're going to self-learn. Well, that $600 can go towards starting a business. But I'm not giving you that $600 back because that's my policy. No refunds. Mm -hmm. If you are trying to be successful, if you are trying to um, be consistent, you have to get up every day and work on that, right? Mm -hmm. Every day is a, a new day to make a better breakthrough. So that, that, is, that is the key um, that is part of the growth process of, of knowing who you are is, is understanding the work that you have to put in. Um, and then you kind of allow for that process to be organic and take place the right way. Um, we can't control every aspect of a business, so you don't know when it's going to break through for you. True. You just have to keep going at it like every day is the day you're going to get the breakthrough. Should I, test, should I test run the business before I quit my job? Absolutely. Absolutely. Field test it. Give it a shot. <laughs> Try something that will give you a baseline of how this is going to work, mm -hmm. right? I, I'll give you an example. If you um, want to find out if you can cook something good, you cook it, 
and you go and let people taste it for free. Mm -hmm. That's going to tell you right away, you can you cook? Yeah. That's instant feedback because the look on their face is going to be like, mm, this is good. Or the look on their face is going to be like, mm-hmm. Like when, mm -hmm. you see that video when Oprah tasted that woman's million dollar chicken? She didn't even, like, she didn't even think anything different. She was like, okay, mm, all right. This is a million dollars? I'm yeah. spitting this out after the take, yeah. Mm -hmm. But no, I, I, I definitely like that because people always think about how they're going to transition yeah. from their business, I mean, from their job to owning their own business. Right. How should that process be? Should, should they focus on, this is one of the advice I've given people. If you're creating your own business and you want to transition out of your uh, job, mm -hmm. then you have to evaluate your expenses yep. and slowly start chipping it away within your own business. Do you got any other plans? Uh, that is definitely good to know startup costs, right? To know um, what you'd be spending, uh, to know what you're taking away from that salary position to that independent position. So uh, I've been independent for a while, but I do have a fallback, right? I still teach, but I, I, when I got away from corporate, you know, which is about 15, actually, yeah, about 15 years ago, I walked completely away from the corporate structure. I'm like, I'm good. I'm going to just do it. I'm going to go alone. I had to know what, what it took to run my household. And then I had to know what it took to, um, you know, to cut back on, right? I had to know, like, you know, it's not how much you make is how much you save. It's not how much mm -hmm. you make is how much you spend. Right. So I had to know how much I was spending and where to cut back on. So if I was valet parking everywhere I went, I would start street parking. Mm -hmm. That probably saved me 10 to 40 bucks a month if I was going out a lot. And those are things that you can cut back on. You, you know, you obviously can cut back on the amount of food you consume. Food, food for, is one of the biggest killers. Food is a four hundred dollar a month killer. expense. Easy. Easy four hundred. And if you're eating good, which all good food costs more money, um, you're gonna spend more. If you whole food shopping, if you you know. Uh, Gelson's or any of those stores, Trader Joe's, where it's just a little bit more for a bag of lettuce and some other stuff, some organic stuff, that's what you have to pay. Yeah, because it'll add up, especially if you're going out to eat. You yeah. won't you won't realize it. You look up, it'd be 15 for this meal, 30 for this meal, going out. Two to two to three times a day. Mm -hmm. You know, if you skipping, you know, if you're hitting breakfast and lunch or lunch and dinner, yeah, that's a lot of money. Should I um, choose between a higher risk business and a lower risk business when I'm starting out? You should, you should be comfortable in terms of the risk level. That, again, falls back to the assessment, the entrepreneur assessment, the self-assessment. That assessment will evaluate what kind of risk are you willing to take, right? And, you know, for most people, it's tough, right? If you go to Vegas you, and you gamble, you're assessing the risk that you're willing to take. Mm -hmm. You have three to $500 in your pocket. How much are you willing to risk losing? That's true. And when you get caught up in it, now you're willing to risk more, <laughs> right? And so when you're looking at the business opportunities and how, how it takes to get into them and to start up, whether it's direct sales and you got to buy your first membership, which is yourself, and it costs $299 or $150 or $500 for Herbalife or any of these direct sale network marketing companies, you're willing to risk that, mm -hmm. you know, for the chance of making a lot of money. So you have to actually assess that risk. And I mean, me personally... I'm all in, you know, if I got five in my pocket, that's the five I came to lose, but I'm trying to turn that five into five thousand, yeah. five hundred, five, whatever. How do you balance out the time between work and your job? Yeah. So that's like a very business. That's, my yeah, that, that's a tricky one, right? But what I do now, because I realized that I was carrying too much stress from everyone else is I always put me first. Okay. Cause you know, being successful is selfish, right? You know, Kobe got to shoot a thousand jumpers. He wasn't worried about his wife and kids at the time he was That's shooting. True. So I take care of myself first, and then I prioritize my day based upon what I got to get done. So if I got meetings, my meetings will get scheduled. If I got to be in class, I'm going to be in class. I might have office hours after class. I'm going to take care of that. And then I'm also watching what I eat, my, my energy level, my consumption. So there's a lot of tracking of personal things that go throughout your day. You got to make sure you're thinking ahead. You got to make sure you got water at all times. So my day is really structured. It's not athletic structured. It's, it's entrepreneur structured. It's freestyle, but it's a, it's a controlled freestyle. Mm -hmm. And that allows me to keep the stress down because one of the things that, that, that hurt me was I was taking on too much stress and I wasn't taking care of myself. 
And then I'm no good to no one else. Now my son is getting shorted, my girl's getting shorted, everybody's getting short at time because I don't have no energy to deal with y'all. Mm -hmm. yeah, stress, stress is a Take kill. care of yourself please, first. Please, please. At all times, think about you before you can think about everybody else. You can go out and feed the homeless, but you better feed yourself first because if you... You know, and this is the analogy I'm going to give because my guy gave I this to me. I literally just released a video on that today. Oh, you got to do it. In the airplane, when you get your safety instructions, what is the thing that the uh, uh, stewardess tell you? Put the, secure the mask on your face first and then put it over the child. If you're not breathing, <laughs> you can't <laughs> save the child. Mm -hmm. So take care of yourself. The last thing is, is there anything you want to leave people with? Yeah, uh, you know, my... my my aha moment and the two cents that I will leave people out there watching with is you have to go for your dream. You cannot sit back and allow time to pass. We talked about how fast four years ago. We're at the end of 2018. We've got seven, eight days left in this year, and we're looking at 2019 with all these new opportunities. Well, they're not really new. They're the, it's, it's, it's telling you that it's another uh, year to get on top of what you're trying to do. I didn't think about getting my education, I just did it. I didn't think about starting a business, I just did it. I didn't think about, uh, uh, well, I was forced to get in shape, <laughs> but I'd been in shape and it wasn't something I had to think hard about. I just had to be reminded of how you have to live a healthy life in order to be around. So for those out there, just get started. You can't be worried about it. You can't be getting to the new year going, I got these new year's resolutions. No, you should start today. The okay. game, the game, the rapper okay. is out there. He's been on his 60-day fitness challenge. He started before the end of the year because he was like, well, I'm not going to wait till the end of the year to start something new. I'm going to do it right now.